Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about the mathematics of financing a car. All right. So we've talked about simple interest, compound interest, annuities in previous videos, and I'll put the link to those in the comments or in the description below, just in case you missed one of those videos. Um, but today we're going to transition to what's called installment loans and installment loans are loans that you pay back like um, over a specific time period. Uh, such as weekly or monthly or any other time period, right? So those are called installment loans. And when you finance a car, you have what's called a fixed installment loan. And those that just means you make regular monthly payments, okay? So they're fixed, the payments are the same, and you make them every month, okay? So we're going to look at the formula for calculating those regular monthly payments. And I'm not going to show you how to derive the formula, but it comes from using the compound interest and the annuities formula, um, putting those combined, some kind of combination of those two. Um, but here is the formula for figuring out a monthly payment for a fixed installment loan. Okay, so here's the formula for the payment, uh, to figure out the payment for a fixed installment loan. Uh, we have PMT, which means payment, equals P, which is still the principal amount, so the original amount of the loan, um, times R, which is still the interest rate, and remember you have to convert the interest rate to a decimal, over N, which is still the number of compounding periods, and with car notes, you pay them monthly, so your N will always be 12 since you're paying your car notes monthly. That's when your interest is being uh, calculated. And then 1 minus 1 plus R, interest rate again over N, number of compound periods, which will be 12 since it's monthly payments. And then to the negative N times T. So T is the number of years, the number of years that you're going to finance the car for. So um, an average car note is usually five years, but it can vary from four, three, six, seven years. It just depends. So we're going to look at the different options today in this video and just see how they compare, all right? So let's look at an example. For this first example, these examples are pretty lengthy in words um, because they're applications, but they will be so beneficial for you to know how to work them um, for just everyday life, okay? So just suppose that you decide to borrow $20,000 for a new car. So for $20,000, you can get a car like one of these. You can select one of the following loans, each requiring regular monthly payments. So here are your options. Installment loan A, you can get a three-year loan at 7%, or installment loan B, you can get a five-year loan at 9%. Okay, so those are your two options. We wanna find the monthly payments and the total interest for loan A. We wanna find the monthly payments and the total interest for loan B. And then we wanna compare the monthly payments and the total interest for the two loans, all right? So we wanna see basically which one is the better option. So we're gonna look at all that um, each loan offers, okay? So first of all, we have to identify the P, the R, the N, and the T in order to figure out what the monthly payment is. So again, this is example one, and our P is the 20,000 because that's how much the car costs. All right, the car is $20,000. And then our R, so for the first option, so our R is gonna change. So for the first option, we're going for option A, um, the interest rate is 7%, so that would be 0 0.07. And the time for option A is three years. So T would be three. And our N is gonna say the same on both because we're making regular monthly payments, so it will be 12. Alrighty. So now in order to calculate the payment, you'll plug all of this into that PMT formula, which is P, 20,000 times R over N, 0 0.07 over 12 all divided by one minus one plus R over N raised to the negative N times T. Alrighty, and so that's your formula and the rest is just plugging it in the calculator. So now this is where you have to really be careful uh, with plugging this in the calculator because you don't want to make any rounding errors. So when you plug this in the calculator, you want to keep the full decimal as you go along, okay? So I like to start in the bottom, but if you want, you can start in the top. I mean, I like to start in the, the parentheses with the exponent. But if you start on the top, you will get 20,000 times 0 0.07 divided by 12. So you can plug all that in straight and you actually get a repeating decimal. 
11.6666666666666 repeat. You really don't want to round because as soon as you round, you get what's called a rounding error, okay? So you want to write all of those decimals out if you're doing it step by step like that. There's actually also a way, it just depends on what kind of calculator you have. So I have a graphing calculator. I can actually enter all this in without ever having to write down these decimals, but it really just depends on what kind of calculator you have. Um, so then when I go to the bottom, I'm gonna start with the innermost parentheses, so the 0 .07 divided by 12, I'm doing that first. And then I'm gonna add one to that. And then I'm gonna raise that to the negative 36 power because 12 times three is 36. And then I'm going to do one minus that answer. Again, I'm not rounding. I'm not rounding anywhere. I'm writing every single decimal down. Okay, so now when I do that in the denominator, I get 0 0.18892. So that's all the decimals that I get. Let me step on this side so you can see. So this is what I get in the top. This is what I get in the bottom. And again, that's if you're writing it out at each step again you could just plug this all in the calculator without ever um having to write any of this down so now i want to take the top and divide it by the bottom and when i do that i get 0.0. Uh oh i think i made a mistake somewhere hold on so i think here i was supposed to that was supposed to have been 116.6666. Let me make sure. I think I messed that up, y'all. Yeah. yeah, so if you were doing it along with me, you should have noticed that that was wrong. It wasn't 11.6. I wrote the decimal in the wrong place. It was 116.6666. So now if I take that and divide it by the point 0.18921426, I get 617, so the payment comes out to be $617.54. So now I can round it to the nearest cent because we're talking about money now. So that means for that first option, the three-year finance at 7%, we will pay $617.54 a month, which is about right. That's about typical for a car note. Um, that's a little on the higher end. Uh, usually about four or five hundred, but again, it just depends on what kind of car you have. Um, because you know, the more luxury, the more luxurious the car, the higher the car note is going to be. Um, but we'll talk about down payments and all of that in a minute as well because you might have a nice amount of money saved up. But for option A, the payment is $617.54. Okay, now we want to figure out how much interest will you pay uh, for option A. So now let's just, I'm going to erase this. And so in order to figure out how much interest, we have to figure out um, how much will you pay total. So if you're paying, so the total payments will be the 617.54 a month. You're gonna pay that for three years and you're paying that 12 times each year because you're paying it monthly. So you will do 617.54 times, basically times 36 because 12 times three is 36. And you get $22,231.44. So that's what you will pay total. So your interest, to figure out the total interest, you will actually take the total amount that you end up paying, the $22,231.44, and subtract the $20,000 from that, because that's the amount of the car. The car is $20,000. Anything you pay over that is interest. So the interest would be $2,231.44, okay? So for A, you end up paying $617.54 a month and your interest ends up being $22,31.44, all right? And both of those are dollar amounts. So that's how you will figure out the payment and the interest. So that's loan option A. So now let's look at loan option B. For option B, so the P will not change. We're still financing a $20,000 car and the N doesn't change because we're still making monthly payments. Now what will change is the R and the T. So for option B, we are financing, um, we are financing five year loan at 9%. So our T will be five. 
Our T would be five and our R would be 9%. Okay, T is five and R is 0 0.09. And so what we will wanna do is plug all that into the same formula we used to figure out um, loan option A. So it'll be the 20,000 times 0 0.09 over 12. All of that divided by one minus one plus 0 0.09 over 12 raised to the negative. In this case, it will be 12 times five because it's for five years. And actually that was a bracket. And so once you plug everything in, the rest is plugged in the calculator. So I'm reaching for my calculator again. I would go, um, you could do the top first. So let me see 20,000 times 0.09 divided by 12, you get 150 in the top. And then if you do the bottom, I will start with the inside of parentheses, 0 0.09 divided by 12, add one to that, raise that to the negative 60, cause 12 times five is 60. And then do one minus that answer. And in the bottom, you get 0.36130030014. And so if you do 150 divided by that answer, you would get 415.17. So your payments come out to be $415.17. I'm rounding it to the nearest cent because that's what they're gonna do. Um, the loan, that's what the banks are gonna do. They're gonna round it to the nearest cent. They want every cent, all right? So $415.17. All right, so as you can see already, that gives you a cheaper uh, monthly payment. The monthly payment went down by $200, a little more than $200. And so that would look like a more attractive offer, right? But let's look at the big picture. So let's look at how much you would end up paying in interest for that. So for 15, 17, I'm gonna erase this so that we can figure out how much you'll end up paying total. So the total payments would be the 41517. So 41517 monthly payments. You'll pay that each month and you'll pay that for five years. So basically you take that 41517 and multiply it by 60 or 12 times five, which is 60. And you end up paying $24,000. $910.20. So you get $24,019.2. And so if you calculate the interest, the interest will be your total payments minus the $20,000, which gives you the $4,910.20. Okay. So for option B, so if I just rewrite these, remember for option A, your monthly payment was $617.54 and you pay $2,231.44 in interest. And so then for loan option B, your monthly payment would be $415.17 and you'll end up paying $4,910.20 in interest. All right, so now, which of these is the better loan option? Now, you might say, depending on how you look at it, you might say, okay, B is the better option because I'm gonna be paying less each month. But if you look at how much you pay overall for the car, with option A, you'll end up paying $22,231.44. But with option B, you'll end up paying $24,910.20 for that car. So you actually end up paying more with option B. So in this case, option A, is actually the better option, okay? Even though your monthly payment is higher, um, you're paying it over a lower period and you're paying it with a lower interest rate. So it makes that a better option, okay? So, and that's typically how it works. You know, if you go a lower period, they'll give you a lower interest rate. So now this is how you would calculate your payments and how much you'll end up paying overall for the car because you don't just pay 20,000, you pay 20,000 plus the interest. 
for borrowing that money. Oh, and one of the things I didn't say earlier about the installment loans is that with an installment loan, you actually get to have access to that asset, whatever it is you're purchasing right then and there. So you don't have to pay the whole 20,000 first before you can actually get it. So just imagine if we had to do that, you gotta pay all of this money for five years first and then you can actually get the car. But no, it doesn't work like that with the car, okay? Now, sometimes you may have a down payment. So let's look at an example of when you have a down payment, how that would change um, the dynamics of these calculations. Okay, so for example two, this time you wanna suppose that you are buying a car for $56,000. So now, for $56,000, you can get a car like one of these. Um, this $56,000 includes taxes and license fees. So now when you go buy a car, you'll realize that on top of the price of the car, you have to pay taxes and you have to pay license fees. So in this case, that $56,000 includes the car and the, title, the taxes and license fees. All right. So this time you saved up $8,000 for a down payment. And so the dealer is offering you two incentives. All right, and so you need to know, you need to be able to know how to figure out which one of these incentives is the better option. So incentive A is the dealer is offering you $10,000 off of the price of the car, followed by a four year loan at 12.5% interest. Incentive B does not have a cash rebate, but it provides free financing. That means no interest for four years. Um, what is the difference in monthly payments between the two offers and which incentive is the better deal? Okay, so this is thing, these are things you need to know how to do. So let's look at both of these examples. So first of all, the P is, the P, the principal amount is $56,000. Well, actually the P is not $56,000. Let me get my eraser. The P is gonna change with both options. So let's just start with option A. So with option A, the car is $56,000 but you saved $8,000 for a down payment. So you will subtract that $8,000 to get to your P. Now the other thing is that option A or incentive A also give you $10,000 off the price of the car. So not only will you take off the 8,000, you'll also take off the additional 10,000. So if you do 56 minus 8,000 minus 10,000, you actually end up with 38,000. So that means you need to get a loan for $38,000. So now your P is $38,000 because you, you paid $8,000 off, off at the top and then they offer you $10,000 off the price of the car, all right? So then it also says with option A, um, you will finance the car for four years at an interest rate of 12.5%. So that would be 0.125 if you convert that to a decimal. Now 12.5% is pretty high for interest rate on a car. So just throwing that out there. But sometimes it just depends on your credit. That will depend on how high or low the interest rate will be that they offer. All right. So in order to figure out the payment, we will plug all of this in to we will plug this all into um, the payment formula. So it'll be 38,000 times the 0.125 over 12. Oh, I forgot to put N is 12 because you're gonna make monthly payments. So all over 12, all of that over one minus one plus R, 0.125 over 12 raised to the negative 12 times, and this is four years, so times four. All right, once you plug everything into the formula, the rest is plugging it in the calculator. So plug this in the calculator. Um, if you start with the top, 38,000 times 0.125 divided by 12, you end up with a repeating decimal, 395.833 repeating. And then in the bottom, I will do the 0.125 divided by 12. This isn't the only way you can go. This is just the way I like to go. I do the fraction, then I add the one to it, and then I raise it to the power. So I raise that to the negative 48 power, and then I do one minus that answer. And if you have an answer button, then you can just write the answer button without even having to type that all in. So let me show you all on my calculator. So on my calculator, if you look at the negative key, I don't know, if it's blurry, you can see it says A and S right there. And so 
if I hit the second button in A and S, it'll re-enter the previous answer. So my previous answer was this 0 .608 number. You notice I've been hitting answer every line. Um, so all I have to do is do one minus the answer. That answer is giving me this part. So one minus that will give me what I get in the denominator. So I get 0 0.391, 8986A7. So now this answer key is clutch because it keeps me from having to re-enter in all those decimals. So I could actually re-enter the top 395.8333333. I'm just going to put a whole bunch of threes and then I could do divided by and I hit that answer key. And you see I do that divided by the answer and hit enter and it gives me $1,010.04. Alright, so as you can see, you want to get a luxury car, um, you can expect a higher payment. So the more you pay for the car, you can expect a higher payment. And that's with only financing 38000 of it. But this is over four years and it does have a higher interest rate. So the length of time, the shorter the length of time is, it drives your payments up. And the higher the interest rate is, it drives your payments up. Okay. So this will be the payments. Um, let's see, how much will we pay? For the car is what we'll do next. So for the total, we would do, we will pay a thousand and ten oh four a month times twelve months times four. So we'll do that for forty-eight payments. So a thousand and ten and four cents times forty-eight. So we'll end up paying forty-eight thousand four hundred and eighty-one dollars and ninety-two cents. So that's what we'll pay overall for the car. Um, and then how much interest will we end up paying? Well, in this one, it don't ask us to calculate interest, but if you had to, you would do the 48,481.92 minus the 38,000, cause that's what we were borrowing. And that would give you $10,481.92, okay? So you'll end up paying uh, 48,000 total, but that'll be $10,000 in interest on top of the 38,000 that you borrowed. Okay, so now let's look at option B. For option B, um, we are going to, it's not gonna have a cash rebate. So the car is $56,000. There's no cash incentive, but there is also free financing. So no interest for four years. So for B, the cost of the car was 56,000, right? but you have an $8,000 down payment. So if you take off that $8,000, that leaves you with $48,000. Now, so that means you're gonna be paying $48,000 on the car, but since there's no interest, you don't have to plug that into the payment formula because no interest is being accrued or no interest is being added to that amount. And so basically you'll just take that $48,000 to figure out what the payments are. So this is different because there's no interest. So you don't have to plug it into that formula previously. Um, but you would take $48,000 and you would divide that by 12 times four. Now where, why 12 times four? Because that's the number of payments that you will make. So you're paying $48,000, no more, no less, okay? And you're gonna make those payments for four years. Yeah, because it said over four, you know, interest of four years and you're gonna make it monthly. So you're gonna make 48 payments total. So if you take 48,000 and divide it by 48, you get your payments to come out to be $1,000. And so what do you end up paying for the loan? You just end up paying $48,000 because there's no interest involved in that. And remember that already included the taxes and the license fees. So remember for option A, so for option A, your payments came out to $1,010.04. And for option B, your payments come out to $1,000. So it asks us to find the difference in the monthly payments. So the difference in the monthly payments is just $10. So monthly option A, you'll be paying more. You'll be paying $10 more. Now also for option A, you end up paying a total of $48,481.92 over the loan. And for option B, you end up paying $48,000. So the difference in how much you'll pay overall is $481.92. So you'll end up paying more monthly for option A and you'll end up paying more overall for option A. So what that means is that option B is gonna be the better incentive, okay? 
and it's really not too big of a difference ten dollars a month difference and 481 dollar difference overall but when you hear it no interest for 12 years i mean no interest for four years you would you would think it sounds like it'll be a huge a, a huge difference but it's not that big of a difference but option b is still the better option Okay, hopefully this makes sense to you. I know it's a lot, um, but if you have any questions, you can include them in the comments below. Okay, now purchasing a vehicle is a major expense, right? I mean, but vehicles are necessary, especially if you work to make money and you need to travel to get there, you need to drive yourself to work. Um, so it is, it's, it's worth the investment, but it's a huge investment because not only do you have to pay for the car, which is the car note, you also have to pay for the maintenance of the car. Um, you have to pay for your, your tax, your insurance. Um, you also have to pay for gas, okay? So gas is one of the biggest expenses that's continuous um, throughout the year when you have a car, alrighty? And so what we wanna talk about is how to um, calculate like savings when it comes to gas. And so this next example, um it, we're actually going to use this formula which is the annual fuel expense formula this is how you can calculate how much you'll spend on average for gas um if you do a monthly budget so i live by a monthly budget and i actually include gas in my monthly budget so this is a good way to help you figure out like how much you would spend to estimate how much you would spend a month on gas all right so the formula is given by, you take the annual miles driven. So you need to know about roughly how many miles do you drive on your car each year, divide that by the miles per gallon, and then you multiply that by the price per gallon. On average, they say you try to drive 20,000 miles a year on your car, but that's not always accurate. Um, some people drive way less, some people drive way more. It just depends on, you know, how much you drive and your commute to work or, you know, where all you have to go. Um, but for this last example, example three, suppose that you drive 24,000 miles per year and gas averages $4 per gallon. All right. What will you save in annual fuel expenses by owning a hybrid car averaging 50 miles per gallon rather than an SUV averaging 12 miles per gallon? So this is something you have to consider when also when you're purchasing a car. Do you want to get an SUV, a bigger vehicle? which of uh, the miles per gallon is lower, or you wanna get a smaller vehicle, which gives you more miles per gallon, or a hybrid, which gives you even more miles per gallon, all right? So let's look at the savings on that, and then there's a second part, which I'll read in a minute, but let's get through the first part first. Okay, so the formula is the annual miles driven divided by the miles per gallon times the price per gallon. So for the SUV, you can expect to spend so we, we uh, are assuming that we drive 24,000 miles per year. So you would do 24,000 divided by the miles per gallon. So the SUV gets 12 miles per gallon, which is pretty accurate. And then the average cost of gas is $4 in this particular example. It depends on where you are in the country. Um, down south in Texas, we usually have a smaller or lower miles per gallon in on the west coast is usually higher when you go north sometimes it's higher so it just really depends on what area you're in so if you multiply or divide 24,000 by 12 and multiply it by 4 you actually get $8,000 so you can expect to spend about $8,000 um, in gas per year for the SUV so now let's look at the hybrid so you will use those same numbers except the only thing that's going to change is the miles per gallon so it says that with the hybrid, you can get 50 miles per gallon. That means for every gallon of gas you have, you could drive 50 miles. Um, and then the cost is still $4. And so if you multiply and divide that out, you get $1,920. Okay, and again, these are dollars. So how much will you save? So you can see that's way lower with the hybrid. Um, so how much will you save if you get the hybrid? You do the 8,000 minus 1,920, and you'll actually save $6,080 by getting the hybrid, okay? So you save more because with the hybrid, you can drive further before you have to fill up again. With the SUV, you're constantly filling up, and that's so true. My husband has a truck, and I have a, a little car, um, and my gas lasts me like, a long time, especially now since I'm at home quarantine, I barely get gas. 
but he's constantly having to refill up because his truck doesn't get as many um, miles per gallon as my car does. All right, so now let's look at the second part of this. For the second part, it says, what if you deposit your monthly fuel savings at the end of each month into an annuity that pays 7.3% compounded monthly? How much will you have saved at the end of six years? Okay, so now this is going back to the annuity. Um, and so we have to recall what the formula is for an annuity. And the formula for an annuity is A equal to P times one plus all over N raised to the N T minus one, all of that over R over N. So that's the formula for an annuity. So just like with a lot of the other formulas, you need to know what is P, what is R, what is N, what is N T, uh, what is T, I mean, yeah. So you need to know what each of those are. So in order to figure out what P is, we need to know how much will we, will we be depositing each month into the annuity. So now remember that our savings were $6,080. 6,080 was the annual savings. So we need to figure out what would that be monthly? So we will take the 6,080 and divide it by 12. So I'm trying to figure out what is P. So because that was our annual savings, we would divide by 12 to see what it is monthly. And it comes out to be, if you round it to the nearest dollar, it comes out to be $507. So with this one, I will round it to the nearest dollar. So if we're putting, say, $507, which is the money we would save if we got a hybrid, if we put that um, into an annuity each month, so our P would be 507, our N would be 12. Also, it said that it calculates interest at 0.7.3%. So our R will be 0 0.073. And we will do this for six years. So our T will be six. Okay. So now we will want to plug each of those things into this formula for the annuity. So let's plug them in and see what we get. So our payments are $507. And one plus 0 0.073 we're doing it monthly over 12 raised to the 12 times six all of that minus one and all of that over the 0 0.073 over 12. all right so again it's plugging into the calculator and so I'm grabbing my calculator i'm going to start up here in the numerator inside the parentheses so the 0 0.073 divided by 12 I'm gonna add one to that. I'm gonna raise it to the 72, 12 times six is 72, to the 72nd power, then subtract one from that, and then multiply that by 507. And so in the numerator, I get 277.6079232. And then in the denominator, 0.073, Um, 0 0.073 divided by 12, you get 0 0.00608333. So if you take the 277.607.9232 divided by that answer, you end up getting $45,634.18. And so that's how much you'll have in the annuity after six years. So if you take the money that you save, so if you decide, okay, let me get a, instead of getting an SUV, I'm going to get a hybrid and I'm going to save on gas. And what I'm going to do with those savings is I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it into an annuity each month. And then after six years, if you do that for six years, you'll have $45,000 in that annuity, which means you will most likely have gotten your money back from what you paid on that hybrid car. All right. So hopefully you find this helpful. Um, hopefully these are skills that you will use in your future when it comes to trying to figure out, you know, what's the best option for purchasing a car. Although there are formulas um, 
on a computer that will calculate these for you. Um, you just enter in the terms and they will automatically calculate it. It's good to know how to calculate it by hand as well. Um, and so this is how you calculate it by hand. If you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to reach out. And thanks again for tuning in. And if you felt it, if you found this video helpful, then hit the thumbs up like button. And thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.